Welcome. Thank you for joining our Compliance in the Cloud Best Series uh, webinar. I am Becky Melody, your hostess for today's presentation, Kim Hutchings, USDM VP Alliances and Consulting, along with Plorent Umeri, CEO for 123 Compliance, will be presenting. The discussion today will cover introductions, webinar logistics, and the discussion topic, Compliance in the Cloud, Solutions for Meeting and Maintaining FDA Regulations. USDM is proud to have Kim Hutchings leading our team for Alliances and Consulting. She's been with USDM Life Sciences since 2001 and managing the Partner Alliances for USDM since 2005. Kim is on the forefront venturing into leading edge solutions for the compliance in the cloud practice, and she leads the alliances with cloud partners including Salesforce.com, 123 Compliance, ServiceMax, DocuSign, and several others. We're very proud to partner with 123 Compliance in the cloud assurance space and to have Plurent joining us in presentation today. He's the co-founder of 123 Compliance and offers 15 years in the life science industry. He offers various IT um, experience and various IT leaderships in, uh, in medical device and pharma companies. Excuse me, and he's founded other healthcare and life science software companies in the past, so uh, just a wealth of knowledge and experience. He's responsible for all of the strategic direction of 123 Compliance. USDM is focused exclusively on life sciences domain, and we're the market leader in providing quality and regulatory IT compliance professional service solutions. We're headquartered in Santa Barbara, California, and we've delivered more than 1,000 successful projects with over 300 life science clients. We offer hands-on experience assisting clients who are under regulatory distress, and we're the market leader for validation accelerator packs. Our various dedicated practices include global quality and auditing, IT and virtualization, life science cloud, governance, risk, and compliance, laboratory, which includes systems and equipment, ECM, ERP, PLM, enterprise quality management, manufacturing automation and equipment, clinical drug safety, our business intelligence practice, program and project management, and the newest, our UDI track and trace practice. The content uh, today will be covered in approximately 30 minutes, and then we'll invite you to post questions for our team via the iLink message board on the uh, lower left of your screen, or you can join in discussion on LinkedIn and post any questions there. We are happy to address questions offline as well. Just shoot us a note at usdm at usdm.com. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. And with that, I'll turn the presentation over to Kim. Thank you very much, Becky, for the introduction, and thank you all for joining us today. Uh, we thought it would be um, a good time to get together and share some of our recent successes with helping our customers use Salesforce.com as well as Salesforce apps to manage regulated business processes. For those of you that are using cloud solutions or perhaps considering it, you know that the potential to save costs and increase collaboration and really overall efficiencies are great, but the challenges around compliance have I think been sort of a, an issue for, for companies. And we have been working really close to, close to many of our, our companies to, to address these challenges. Um, challenges including how do you know that the, that the company you are going to be working with, um, the cloud solution provider, is managing their operations in a compliant manner? Can you trust a third party with your data? You know, how do you qualify or validate a system that isn't on-premise that you don't necessarily have control over? Once you get it validated, how do you keep it compliant? And then how do you try to integrate those systems into your, into your internal validated legacy systems? I think it's important to take a minute to share the mandates for cloud service providers. 
And if you look at the regulations and, and you know, recent guidance around GAMP 5, you'll see that cloud-based FDA regulated IT systems must be established and maintained at compliance levels equal to internally hosted systems. So the regulations don't change. If you look at 21 CFR Part 820, you need to have a, a supplier quality audit just like you do with any other application. You need to make sure that you have evaluated, you have control, and you're monitoring these solutions, which means you need to validate the application. And if you have looked into GAMP 5 and taking a risk-based approach, Appendix S5 does give you some specific steps to be taken to control and monitor outside IT hardware and services. So our experts and, and teams have been really working very closely with, with Salesforce in the past couple of years to put together a solution that is working very well for a lot of our customers. Um, the reality is because the, the regulations aren't any different, we have taken what has been our business and our best practice methodology for over 10 years and created validation accelerator packages for cloud-based technologies. They're application specific. They help you assure acceptable levels of compliance, help you minimize the cost of compliance ownership. Um, many of you may have used some of our validation accelerator packages for ERP systems or laboratory systems or content management over the years. We've now developed validation packages for cloud applications including Salesforce as well as Salesforce providers. I think what's important to, to mention here is that these products are standardized and they're updated with each product release. You know, knowing that if you are working with any sort of cloud system, you, you know that they're making some changes to, to the application periodically. And so making sure that your validation package is, is up to date and, and available at all times is, is certainly very important. So what do we call these new validation packages in the cloud? Um, we call them Cloud Assurance. And, and what's included in Cloud Assurance continues to grow. And we're going to give you a couple of, of case studies today that kind of talk about a couple of instances where we, our customers have been able to use them. But for Salesforce.com specifically, what's included in Cloud Assurance is a vendor audit that we update annually. It includes a qualification package for the Salesforce.com platform. Um, gives you all of the, the testing, the requirements, and the tools to ensure that the platform, first and foremost, is compliant. The package provides you updates to that solution set three times a year. Um, we have a couple different options for, for maintenance, um, some really cool new technologies around um, being able to automate this process. And again, um, starting with the Salesforce platform itself and having that qualification package taken care of, we've gone on to, to develop validation packages for our partners including 123 Compliance who will be talking today, as well as ServiceMax and others. Cloud Assurance is actually now available on the Salesforce App Exchange. So for those of you who are Salesforce customers, this is something that you can actually get directly from the App Exchange. We do have the accelerators for the platform. We have accelerators for Sales Cloud, for Service Cloud, and again, many of our other partners. It is subscription-based, so you subscribe and have a a monthly fee just like you do with your cloud systems. Um, and it's again updated with each release. It's important I think to, to recognize and mention that you know, we've, we've taken this offering very, very seriously. We have very um, recent former FDA auditors that have been a part of our team that has developed this, this offering. Um, and again, feel like we've really dotted the I's and, and crossed all the T's. So what's included in the Validation Accelerator Package? Again, if you've worked with our products before, it really includes all those documents that you're going to need to put together to validate or, or qualify a system. So for the Salesforce platform, we've got a, a Part 11 assessment. We have a validation plan. We have a risk assessment. We've got system requirements. We have installation qualification, operational qualification, performance qualification, traceability, and a final report. So again, having that for the platform and then being able to roll that out and add potential 
partners or other apps to the solution is, is what we are really excited about and what we are going to be sort of showcasing today. So with that, um, I want to introduce our first case study um, with 123 Compliance. So we have been partnering with them since the beginning of our, our Cloud Assurance offering. Um, what is great about 123 Compliance is it sits on top of Salesforce. So it sits on top of that qualified platform that we have already put together and provides out of the box electronic signature, an audit trail, workflow functionality. We have learned um, I think pretty quickly over the past couple of years that the less you have to customize your solutions and the more you can take advantage of apps that give you more of a package solution, the less time you are going to take um, to get your business process, processes that you want in Salesforce, and the less validation time you are going to have to consider moving forward. So with that, I will turn it over to Clarence. Hi. Thank you, Kim. So uh, again, this, uh, my name is Sorrent. I am with 123 Compliance. I am uh, one of the co-founders of 123 Compliance. And we started the company um, over, you know, a little over two years ago. And um, we uh, got introduced to the Salesforce platform. We have been in the life science space for a long time, but then we got introduced to the Salesforce platform. And we, you know, in the beginning, our jaw dropped. You know, it is a huge functionality leap uh, from everything that is out there in the field. And we thought this is exactly what our uh, customers, what, what uh, any life science company probably need in this space, in the, uh, in the product surveillance space, in the quality management space, and so on. And so with that said, you know, we thought you know, there has got to be a better way to do you know, what is happening right now in, in, uh, in the compliance space. And so we started building uh, all this functionality on Salesforce platform. And then, um, as we build this uh, functionality, we talk to Salesforce. Salesforce has been a great partners of ours uh, as well. They've helped us out quite a bit. And then, uh, but the, uh, the 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 big part about it was that you know we had to go through this very uh, very rigorous technical review and then extremely rigorous uh, security review um, uh, for us to be able to release our product in the App Exchange, the Salesforce App Exchange in which our uh, life science company that can then basically download and install in, in, their, in their Salesforce orgs. Um, so we have released uh, you know, four packages right now uh, in the App Exchange. And the first one is this uh, 123 Compliance Platform. And that's basically a Part 11 platform, the um, 21 CFR Part 11 platform for, the Salesforce, uh, for, for Salesforce.com. And basically what it does is you know, it plugs in, uh, and then you know, right at the, uh, after you plug it in, then you all of a sudden have you know, all these Part 11 functionality that you, you didn't have before. And you have, have electronic signatures and uh, audit, full audit trail, and uh, you have workflow with separation of duties and so on. And then the, the next uh, product rele released was the product surveillance that has uh, uh, product complaints and adverse events. Um, and then for device companies, we also do uh, warranty claim management and so on. The, uh, uh, another product we released was uh, medical device tracking, and that's a specific. There's a specific regulation uh, by the FDA that says, you know, will allow you to sell the product, uh, uh, and it's, this is uh, typically for implantable devices. Will allow you to sell the product, but you have to track where these products go, which is the doctor that do, that's doing the implant, and you know when the explant happened, and so on. Um, so that's a very medical device specific, and then quality management is life science, you know, in general has you know change control, CAPAs, um, non-conformance deviations, audits, and uh, all the other you know quality uh, sort of processes around it. And then we have uh, a sort of a, an analytics practice that we do around all of this, and this is all happening on the Salesforce platform. So uh, another thing I want to uh, highlight is that um, you know. Since we started working with Salesforce, and uh, we uh, we knew from uh, on a professional level, we knew the uh, uh, folks from uh, USDM. They've been great partners of ours. Uh, it's um, you know we uh, collaborated together on the validation strategy that uh, needed to happen for uh, both for the platform qualification that that Kim mentioned, and for our specific uh, product uh, validation. So. Uh, we have a great validation package that comes with our products that is uh, uh, that is uh, made by uh, USDM. 
So going back to our platform, so the, the platform uh, basically, like I said, is, is, is a plug-in uh, to any Salesforce uh, object. Uh, and it it uh, has got complete audit trails with uh, co configurable audit trails. You, you know, you pick which fields you want uh, uh, audit trail. They've got no limitations on how many fields you can audit trail and for how long you can keep it. You can keep it as long as you keep the record. You know, it's like you know real part eleven audit trail. It's got configurable workflow with uh, visual cues, so it tells uh, people you know uh, you know. Uh, QA approval is needed right now, and then they, uh, people can, uh, users can click on uh, quality uh, uh, approval and enter their electronic signatures and so on. Um, and, uh, and, and another visual representation of that is basically you've got a standard or, or custom Salesforce object. So if you are if you are familiar with how uh, Salesforce is built, it's got these things called objects and think of objects as you know. Let's say you've got accounts. Accounts is an ob object, and you think of accounts as, let's say, your customers or your patients. Uh, uh, you know, you're the hospitals or the clinics that are calling. Uh, assuming product surveillance here, it's uh, hospitals or clinics are calling. Those are accounts, uh, and the, the complaint is an object. Um, so you've got an object, and you apply Part 11 platform on it, and you've got a fully Part 11 compliant on the other side. And then uh, complaints and adverse events. So this complaints and adverse events, you know, uh, provides a full uh, sort of uh, uh, cycle of of, of uh, product surveillance, and that is from the intake, uh, um, from the intake of the of the adverse event or or the product complaint, and then the, the assessments that happen on that on whether this is an actual complaint or not or a, or a, a, uh, uh, or an adverse event, and then the regulatory decisions on whether this is a, uh, a reportable event or not, and then actually the, the agency reporting as well, uh, that both for the U.S. and and rest of the world, and then also uh, risk management around this, and then a, any possible you know COPAs related to this, and and uh, and then the the trend analysis that sort of feeds into the COPA process. So if you think of a typical or a Typical Salesforce implementation, you might have, for example, Service Cloud that you handle. You've got a call center on Service Cloud, and you are taking calls from the customers. And these are, you know, uh, some business rules are applied to that, where you know uh, a certain criteria is met, a complaint is created, and then this creates uh, uh, sort of the chain of events that happen after that. Like you know, a product return might be needed, an investigation might be needed to find out the root cause of uh, of uh, this problem. And then you know the, tra the checking of the trends and the Kappa generation and so on, and then um, all the processes that go around the Kappa. Um, on the device tracking side, uh, there is uh, basically lots of integration that happens with your sort of logistics or ERP system, where you know you uh, check which um, where the devices go, and then also uh, auditing uh, sort of compliance. Uh, on the physician side to you know see if they returned the information or the form or filled out the information online that you know they did an implant or they did an explant and then checks audits the devices that have not had any action performed on that so that they might have been shipped uh, to a clinic let's say and then a year later there's no information about it and so uh, this uh, uh, the idea here about all these um, uh, uh, all these products is basically to uh, increase uh, to, to maintain the, the process uh, conformance. Uh, basically, you are, you are good process compliance. So you know we've got uh, you know the companies have all these regulations that they need to um, follow, and then having the tool that basically enforces the process and keeps the process going and moves the process along faster and, and so on. Uh, th that's, that's the idea around you know, uh, the products that have been released so far. And then the next one is the quality management. So this is, the quality management is all uh, sort of uh, fully integrated on the, uh, all the other parts that are, uh, all, the other, all the other information that we use Salesforce. And that includes the complaints that we talked about. Uh, in, includes the the customers that are already there, um, and so you know uh, uh, audits, for example, will 
uh, will uh, generate COPAS, let's say, or uh, COPAS will generate change control. These are all things that are interlinked together uh, and um, work together to you know, uh, maintain compliance. So as far as uh, customer uh, accolades, uh, we actually, uh, uh, when we put this, uh, um, all, uh, so one of the things that we always make sure is that all our cu customers are referenced and this is just one of them. Uh, we have a neonatal med medical device manufacturer that needed uh, to, um, uh, to have a global complaint system in place, and they, uh, they were users of Salesforce at the time. And you know, just for the sake of um, you know, information here, we are OEM partners of Salesforce. So even if uh, um, companies don't have Salesforce, they can use our products. Um, but uh, this happened. This customer happened to have Salesforce already in place, and they uh, they were looking to use that platform to expand on that platform. And they found one to see compliance, and we knew exactly what they were looking for, uh, and we were able to help them and go live with the help of of USDM. Uh, USDM was our validation partner. Uh, we were able to do the implementation and the validation in a very short period of time. And the, uh, the customer was very happy. And the customer actually presented that uh, at Dreamforce, um, the, you know, basically a testimonial of, of his experience that he had with uh, with the Wonderful Compliance and USDM. Uh, so, uh, on top of the, sort of the products that we have already released, we uh, obviously know both the business side of this. We have been. Uh, um, in this space for a long time, so we know the business and all the requirements, and also, but we know the technology very well. We know we know Salesforce, and we know how to apply this technology to the life science industry. Um, so, on a case study that uh, uh, that what we talked about the complaint, global complaint handling system of Salesforce. So, what we put together was basically the intake, the, the call center where that the, the data is. Um, uh, initially collected, then comes you know phone, web, or email, and then you know after the complaint comes in, there is a reportability decision that needs to be made on whether this is a reportable event or not. And then after that, you know some you know uh, the quality takes over to you know uh, check the risk, uh, and then and then assign engineering to do any uh, root cause analysis and so on. Uh, and then also. Um, a field service might be dispatched uh, for this, or the or the fixes for this. Uh, this was a, a device uh, uh, example. Uh, the uh, the fixes can happen on on sites or on the field, and then uh, sort of uh, wrapping up the complaint process with um, you know back on the regulatory on on whether on, uh, uh, for reportable events to do with the actual reporting um, and to do the closure of the complaint. And this is all happened uh, using Salesforce platform, uh, using one to see compliance and USDM. Um, and this this was a very uh, accelerated. We had an aggressive timeline. And we were able to go live very fast. Um, so um, um, USDM actually did the the platform qualification and the one to see compliance application validation. And then I'm going to pass it on to uh, Kim. Well, thank you, Parent. Um, so I guess as you can all see, there's lots of advantages of being, being able to, to manage your complaints in the cloud. Um, probably a lot of opportunities to, to perhaps replace legacy systems and, and take advantage of, of some new technologies. Um, I wanted to now take the time to discuss maybe another business um, or another use case. Um, as I mentioned, many vendors are now part of Cloud Assurance, including a company called ServiceMax. So if you're in the medical device space, you may already be running ServiceMax. And depending on the business processes you're managing there, you may need to validate it. So in this case study, we had a, a global medical device manufacturer here in the U.S. that was looking for a field service management solution. So they needed an application that could provide service scheduling, could help with inventory and, and parts logistics. They didn't want something on premise. They wanted it to be cloud-based. But of course they were concerned about FDA regulations. 
So they chose ServiceMax and worked with USDM um, to first and foremost again qualify the Salesforce platform and Service Cloud, and then did take advantage of the ServiceMax VAP that we have developed. So if you, as you see in this case study, um, there's a problem with, with a device you want to be able to quickly respond to an issue and verify the problem, yeah. assign the case to a field service manager, and get the repair done as quickly as possible. So, and keeping all of that regulated data and information in a, in a validated system. So again, with ServiceMax, um, with taking advantage of cloud, cloud Assurance, uh, they were able to very quickly and efficiently become validated. Again, what's important when you're really looking at any application, you know you, you can't just validate the system and, and walk away. So we are, they are part of our subscription offering. So anytime that Salesforce or ServiceMax is making an update to their application, we're providing them with an updated validation package to ensure that they stay in a compliant state. I also wanted to take a couple of minutes to announce a couple of new partners that are joining Cloud Assurance. Um, most of you have probably heard of DocuSign. You know, many of you may be using it to execute contracts in your legal or accounting departments. Probably a lot of you have used DocuSign possibly when you bought your house. But, US, or, but DocuSign is, is very quickly and, and for many good reasons moving into the life science space. And we have developed a validation offering specific to DocuSign so that now you can actually use, use the DocuSign technologies to execute regulated business processes and documents. And if you take, take a, a minute to think about that, can you imagine the, the time and the cost savings by being able to use DocuSign to manage your, your regulated business processes? Um, lots more to come there, and, and I think we'll probably be having a a follow-up webinar kind of talking about some of the use cases and things that we're doing with DocuSign. Another partner that we're excited about is um, an application actually that was developed by Cognizant. This application provides sales, service, and complaint handling also built on Force.com. It's a very, very powerful tool that now has a complete solution for compliance with the Cloud Assurance. So we do have now a validation package for, for from Advantage that includes all the functionality for that application as well as the Force.com uh, platform. Lessons learned. Um, Clarence, feel free to, to chime in um, on this as well. I, I think as, if you look at the App Exchange, it, it almost gets overwhelming as a Salesforce user to see everything that's out there. And, and there are new apps really being developed every day. There's, there's an amazing potential, I believe, to, to move your business processes to the cloud. Uh, I think what we've learned with our customers over the past you know, few months to, to a year is, is to try to take advantage of what has already been built on Salesforce. You know, we do have customers that are, are doing a lot of custom you know, configuration and development, which is fine. But I think the, the more you can minimize that and take advantage of, of some of the solutions that have been built, that have been proven in the industry to meet your business requirements and your regulatory requirements, I think there's lots to take advantage there. Um, again, leveraging apps that have the Part 11 functionality, of course, is, is a must. Uh, Plurent, anything you'd like to, like to add to that? Yeah, with you know, I think one of the uh, lessons that we've learned, um, you know, during our implementations is that you know when you know custom custom development tends to balloon over time and it's tough to maintain, and it's tough to keep it validated, and then um, you know we've had the examples where we've had to you know sort of move from the custom uh, help customers move from a from a custom developed application to sort of an out of the box thing because you know, uh, you, you are leveraging you are leveraging you know a wide industry um, knowledge and practice and focus teams that can focus on function, functionality and providing the best functionality for our customers, um, and then and then also the, the sort of the ease of maintaining the validated state, especially with the, you know uh, packages that um, uh, accelerated packages that USM offers. Uh, it's I mean it's. Uh, uh, it's far, far easier to maintain a validated state. With that, I think if there are any questions of the team, we'd be happy to answer them. 
Thank you so much, Kim, and thank you, Plurent. Wonderful information you guys are sharing about this exciting uh, compliance solution and uh, offerings here. Um, we will open the floor to questions now, and while you're typing those questions in, would like to let you know that the webinar has been recorded and will be available on the website, uh, which of course is usdm.com. I see many familiar names on the, uh, the list here. Thank you all for uh, being with us. Uh, continuing and uh, I realize some of you are very new and may not be aware of USDM and our different offerings. So just to quickly touch on, we do have three delivery options. Our projects team, uh, to start with them, we offer start to finish compliance support. And those uh, projects are all led by uh, subject matter expert project managers utilizing the USDM team members with various skill sets. And based on client preference, we can be flexible with availability to work on site or remotely. If you're needing extra hands just to help you meet project deadlines, USDM does support with staff augmentation. So these are for internally managed projects. We offer solid team members with, again, skills and experience specifically needed for your project. So the goal, again, USDM is all about client delight. So we're hoping that our teaming with you results in repeat business and, of course, excellent referrals. The final uh, method is a blended on-site, offshore, onshore model uh, for managed services. This is development and support and validation testing. This approach incorporates cost savings of offshoring, yet reducing the risk, ensuring higher success than traditional offshoring. So um, with that, uh, we will take our first question. Thank you all for chiming in there. Uh, Walter, yes, um, it is possible to view the presentation. Uh, we will have a link to the recorded session, which includes both the slides and the audio. I'll connect with you specifically to make sure you can get that uh, information that you need. Uh, second question is from Rick, um, asking, does the platform track financial information related to instrument repairs uh, meaning labor hours, cost of parts, etc. The answer Florent, to I that think that's is yes. For you. Okay. Yeah, this is Florent uh, with Honesty Compliance. The answer to that is yes, and it, you know it makes very good sense. You know you've got a uh, you've got a uh, service call, and that's going to take both parts and labor, and you can track both of those and both the cost of. Um, of uh, hours and and even depending on you know, sort of the, the type of staff you send and the rates you have for that staff and then also the the cost of uh, labor uh, the cost of parts and the cost of parts would be both the cost uh, the cost uh, to the company you can track both of that and the cost of the customer so that you can keep track of your own costs over time uh, plus uh, you know also the 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 um, AR sort of uh, you know the AR amounts that are uh, that are out there so or the revenue that is out there so um, I, I hope that that answers that question. Thank you. Very good. Okay, our next question is from John. Do the complaints, CAPAs, or non-conformances integrate with other functions of Salesforce? I can take that. So uh, the answer is yes. I mean, this is uh, that's the great thing about Salesforce. It's all in one platform, and if you think about it. You, know, you are going through a sales process, so you have prospective customers that have become customers. All of a sudden, these customers might have complaints, so they are going to call in, and that, that information is already there. That's just one example. Um, and the same thing um, is, uh, like I mentioned for, uh, before about all the, uh, uh, the record types, uh, meaning CAPAs and audits and change control and so on. These are all, you know, um, Link together, so whatever it is in Salesforce is you know naturally sort of integrated together or naturally linked together. Um, there is uh, no you know there is no big integration project to link your CRM to your complaints, for example, because it's all uh, naturally there. Wonderful, thank you, Parent. Our next question is from Kelly. Are the updates to test scripts included in Cloud Assurance? I can take that. Yes, they absolutely are. I think that's one of the one of the advantages is, is if you are a Cloud Assurance 
subscriber, you do get those updates with each you know, seasonal release. So you get the updates to the test scripts. You get the updates to the requirements. Um, and many of our customers are actually you know, going with a, kind of a full service route where we're, we're doing that execution for them. But yes, really for the platform itself, everything that you need is included. Um, with the specific applications like 123 Compliance or ServiceMax, we try to prepackage as much of, those, much of that content, as many of those scripts as we possibly can. And then again, you're going to have to do some customization with your you know, specific use cases. Thank you, Kim. Okay, our last question here uh, seems to be from Susan. Uh, what kind of performance do you get in a global high usage environment? All right, do you want to take that one? I, yeah. I can take that, yes. Uh, so, the, so the first thing is um, we have seen uh, you know, uh, a huge performance improvement, especially for global implementations. Uh, if you think about it, this is, um, this is the strength of Salesforce. You know, it's in the cloud. It's got you know, replicated. Uh, environments in other parts of the world, and your uh, your users don't have to do the VPN and whatever connection the company has to go from Europe, let's say, to the U.S. Uh, so one of the one of the big uh, sort of complaints we always hear is that uh, the people uh, people abroad have terrible performance on on their existing systems for all the uh, applications that are hosted in this country, and that just goes away right away with Salesforce. So we have seen a uh, we have seen a huge performance improvement on that. Thank you, Plurent. And we do have a few more questions coming in, so um, thank you so much for those. Uh, Walter is asking, Salesforce is a multi-tenant cloud. How do you qualify the infrastructure? Um, Server virtual layer and operating system, and manage the changes. This is Kim. I can take that one. So that is what our qualification package for the platform for the in infrastructure includes. So we work very closely with Salesforce in developing requirements, use case, test cases for the entire uh, you know platform, and certainly have the update to that content with each seasonal release. But you're right, they're, they're making system, system changes and, and you need to make sure that you're managing those. So we have a couple different options. Um, if you've got some kind of automated solution and we can, we can recommend some, we actually are working with some of those. There's some regression testing you can do periodically to just make sure that any of those changes are, are not affecting your system performance. And Again, we sort of have an open line uh, of communication to Salesforce and are actually have some different options in terms of you know, any time that they're making a change or a patch, we can do some evaluations and make sure that there's, again, nothing that you need to be concerned about from a compliance perspective. Um, you know, the, the qualification patch package itself is, is a, a lengthy document, but we'd be happy to you know, share some of that content and, and give you a better idea in, in terms of what's included. Thank you so much, Kim. Let's see. Um, question here from uh, Alec. Does your experience and approach with Salesforce, SAS, uh, SAS, excuse me, implementation apply to other CSPs like AWS specializing in um, IAAS or PAAS? Vegetable soup for me there, Alec. <laughs> I think I could take that. Amazon Web Services, some of the other ones. Yes. So our experience and approach can very much be taken and applied to other cloud technologies. Um, I think that we're further along with Salesforce than some of the other vendors out there, and I, I think partially that's just because of their, their real focus and, and ability to, to – I think they're kind of the, the front runner in terms of having some of these, these offerings available to the life science community. But, but absolutely, we, we do work with other vendors and, and provide a, a similar type offering, and we'd be happy to give you some more details. Tremendous. Thank you, Kim. Okay, a uh, follow-on question from Walter. When you say platform, do you have dedicated infrastructure for your application? 
So, um, if so, let's. Ass I'm assuming we're talking about the one two three compliance platform, and the one two three compliance platform is a plugin to a customer's org. So, uh, if you think about and you know uh, an org in so for, for people that don't know Salesforce, an org is basically your instance. Salesforce.com, and the instance can have a production environment, and it can have a, uh, other uh, can have a validation environment and development environment, and they are called, you know, in a in a Salesforce ter terminology, they are called sandboxes. So you would have a sandbox that would be a validation environment, and then you have other other sandboxes called, um, you know, development environment, and these are. Uh, uh, you know, these are dedicated to a specific company. There is an instance, and all the stuff that happens in that uh, belongs to that company. Uh, so, for example, you know, let's uh, you, we had a previous question about field service. Uh, you know, entering the financial information. So, if you're talking about field service or complaint handling, a company has a choice to add complaint handling to their org, and it doesn't affect some other companies. Uh, implementation. Uh, they, cho they choose to do it. They put it in the development environment. They make any configuration changes. They move it to validation. Do the validation there, and then when they're ready, they move it to production. It does not affect anybody else. Thank you very much, Parent. Okay, looks like our last question here from Tracy um, has protection of confidential and personal information uh, records been considered, i.e., HIPAA, high tech, et cetera, for compliance? I can take that, at least originally implement if you want to add on to that. So, yes, um, when I mentioned earlier that we include a a vendor audit as part of Cloud Assurance. There are a couple of different audits actually included there, and one of them is specific to HIPAA and personal information. So we do have we have looked at that specifically just because of, of customer requests, and that audit is is also available as part of the audit, part of our offering, and was actually done by one of our very recent former FDA auditors. So um, I could be happy to give you more details if that would be helpful. Absolutely. And with all of these information, um, everything that we've presented here today, if you're needing a more direct one-on-one, -on -one, um, you know, just understanding as it would directly apply to you and your teams, feel free to uh, contact us. I'd be happy to set up a call with Plurent and with Kim and with the USDM team um, specifically just to kind of see if this is a good fit and a good option for you or offer direction and insight as we're able. I think with that uh, we will wrap up. I would encourage you all to visit the USDM website and find more information around upcoming webinar events as well as recorded sessions of previously presented topics. Our library and education center uh, boasts uh, boy, over 60 uh, presentations across the uh, 13 different practices that USDM can support. Uh, great opportunities for your team to learn a little bit more, making sure you're on track with compliance, or maybe learning about what you're not on track with and where maybe you need some direction, support, or suggestions. Uh, we would also invite you to join the discussion on the USDM group page. Uh, our forum on LinkedIn is a great way to stay up to date for upcoming events and presentations. And do let us know we're on the right track. We uh, do appreciate your feedback and suggestions for future topics. If there's something that you're struggling with, something that we could share, or again, just you know, set the compass to make sure you're in the right direction, we're happy to do that. Thanks everybody for taking the time to join us today. We certainly appreciate the opportunity to team with you all in working towards excellence in compliance. Have a wonderful day.